All right. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. This is Anthony Smoke. And check me out on anthonysmoke.com or follow me on Twitter at Anthony Smoke. Uh, today we're in Power BI, switching it up a little bit, uh, switching over from Tableau to Power BI here. So, uh, you know, I believe if you're going to learn a uh, new tool, you should know how bar charts work, right? That is the basic best practice uh, for visualization. So there are some things that, uh, you know, I was trying to do while creating a visualization. I needed to know how to uh, get a percent of total uh, on my bar charts. And, you know, I had to skill myself up uh, to figure out how to do that, did some research. And as is my MO, I wanted to share that. So uh, let's look at, uh, look at the data here. So we're going to bring in just a basic bar chart. Uh, I'm going to bring in see vehicle and sales and so what I've got here I've got a fake data set and uh, we're looking at uh, uh, vehicles and we're gonna turn on first of all here we're gonna turn on our data labels that's how you do that in Power BI um, as you can see I've got a, uh, a vehicle here and we have the number of uh, sales so very basic this is fake data and I'm using uh, GM vehicles shout out to a uh, Detroit Detroit steel there so um, let's do this first. Let's do a little bit of formatting. Uh, just going to turn the font up here on the Y and on the X. Let's increase that uh, the text size on the axis. And uh, on the data label, we'll do the same thing. So you have to know where all these options are in uh, Power BI uh, when you start using a, uh, a new tool here. So, so as you can see, I've got vehicles. And I've got a number here. So what I wanted was, I didn't want just the uh, the number of sales here. I wanted a percentage of total, right? So this uh, Silverado sales represented how much of the total. So, you know, Tableau, it's a quick table calculation and you're done. But, you know, Power BI, uh, you have to um, go through a little bit more uh, to get that uh, result. So uh, what I'm going to do here is we're going to go into the... Um, click on this tab right here data and then I want to say if we go in here to modeling I want a new measure and we have to write a calculation in DAX and so DAX it's a formula language not a programming language it stands for data analysis expressions and it's, it's basically a library of functions used to build formulas and expressions so fortunately or unfortunately you have to know some basic DAX to be effective in uh, in Power BI so how do we get that uh, that percent of total so I'm gonna start out by using this uh, divide function and I want to sum the number of sales right and I'm gonna use this calculate function so this calculate function is uh, um, it's a pretty useful function in uh, in DAX here um, it's um, you, you enter calculations then then you enter a filter expression for that calculation right so what do we want to calculate we want to calculate the uh, sum of our sales right and then um, our filter is going to be I'm going to use this all selected function and I'll explain what this is doing uh, later and all selected on the data set close the all selected uh, we're closing yeah we're closing the data set closing the all selected closing our calculate then closing our divide right so hopefully that will take oh let's call this the um, uh, vehicle percent of total sales good enough hit this check and my syntax is incorrect because I have let's try that there we go I had an extra parentheses apparently so if I go back here and I look at this vehicle percent total. I'm going to take off uh, sales here, and we're going to put on vehicle percent total. You'll see now I've got a, a percentage. All right, great. And what, what I want to do now is we're going to go here, and let's go to modeling, and I can hit this percent, right? And that'll give me a, a percentage. So 
So that's how we get a percent of uh, total on our uh, bar chart. So let's say I'm going to uh, size this up a little bit, and I want to put a slicer on here. So you saw that I used that all selected uh, function. So let me put the vehicle on here on this uh, slicer. And just again, just for visualization's sake, uh, I want to show on the items. Let's uh, let's up the font here just so you can read this uh, on my different cars. So I'm on. I have all selected. So if I select Equinox, uh, you can see that the percentage changed to 100%. That's because uh, I've only selected Equinox. There's no other. There's no other selections. Uh, the only thing selected is Equinox. So if I select Impala here uh, for Easy E, well, let's do this first. Let me go in here and for uh, for Slicer, there are selection controls. I'm going to turn that on. I'm going to turn on single select. I'm going to turn that off, right? So now I can choose I can choose Equinox, right? I can choose Impala, and you'll see that uh, the percentages change based upon my selections, right? Malibu, Silverado, and Volt, right? So now I'm back to uh, all selected, right? What I originally had. If I start taking things away, I'll have 100%. So now, if I were to go into, uh, oops, sorry, let's go back here and let's change this to all, right? And let me check here. All right. Now, see how my Equinox, it's no longer 100%. It's 32%. If I bring in Impala, 6%. So my total percent here stays the same. It's, it's static no matter what's selected when I, when I have all as my filter criteria. Use that in the filter criteria, right? Whereas if I use all selected, um, that percentage is going to change based upon what is selected. So know that know that difference <laughs> when you're using this uh, this calculation right so let's get rid of let's get rid of our filter uh, bring this back out and just another uh, couple things here on uh, on coloring right so let me take um, let's take sales and bring that over to color saturation and as you can see all right I can get uh, I can change these these colors here uh, because I may not like uh, green and red. So if I go into uh, uh, this second tab here for format, I can go to data colors and I can change the colors here. So for minimum, you know, maybe I maybe I keep it in the uh, the green spectrum here. Uh, well, let's make it light green, right? And then for maximum, you know, we'll go a, go a dark green there, right? And if I wanted to make it diverging, right? Oh, the center, let's make that center white, right? I can do that. So that's how I change the colors here for diverging. Uh, if I go back, now you have to make sure that you have this uh, a value here, sorry, under color saturation in order to get this option to show up under data colors, to get that diverging option to show up. So once you take this away from color saturation and go back to your data colors, you'll see that you don't have that diverging option. But what I can do here, uh, the default option is I can individually change colors here if I wanted to, right? So I can make Silverado red, Equinox, uh, you know, this is not going to be visually appealing, but just wanted to show you that it is something that you can do, right? So on and so forth. I could change uh, all of these uh, if, if I wanted to. So again, uh, some bar chart basics here when using uh, Power BI. This is the video I wish I had. Uh, when I started doing uh, some visualization. So uh, hope you enjoyed this tip. Uh, get out there and do some great things with your data. Thanks for watching, everyone.